All right, before we adjourn the meeting, um, we do not have video conference capability today in this facility and the other facilities were booked. We do have phone tie-ins with locations in Puerto Rico. So we you know, could you give me just a quick audio yeah. check-in, please? Lloyd, I saw he's in the car seat. Oh, is he? Can Reno hear me on the phone? Reno's here, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. And how about Elko? Elko is here, we can hear you. Okay, and I'll call in with you guys when we get to public comment. Um, until then, we probably should keep the remotes on mute. That's all right, so we don't get feedback in the room. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, with that, we'll go ahead and call to order. Uh, the meeting of the Nevada Board of Wildlife Commissioners, Friday, January 29th, here in Las Vegas. Uh, as mentioned, we do have teleconference locations at the Department of Wildlife Western Region Office in Reno, as well as the East Eastern Region Office in Elko. With that, um, Commissioner McNinch, would you please lead us with the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Ms. Scorby, could you please call the roll? Chairman Drew. Here. Vice Chairman Wallace. Here. Commissioner Bliss. Here. Commissioner Hub. Here. Commissioner Johnston. Here. Commissioner McNinch. Here. Commissioner Morai. Here. Commissioner Valentine. Here. And Commissioner Young. Okay, County Advisory Board members in Las Vegas, if you'd please rise and let us know which county you're representing. All right, thank you. And also, just for the record, Commissioner Young has joined us. So are there any county advisory board members in Reno? No, no not in Reno. Okay, and how about in Elko? No, not in Elko. Right, thank you. With that, we will close item number one and move to item number two, approval of the agenda for possible action. The commission will review the agenda and may take action to approve the agenda. The commission may remove items from the agenda, continue items for consideration, or take items out of order. There's one announcement on that um, due to some staff uh, health issues. Item number 10A will be tabled for next meeting, so we won't be addressing item 10A. Any other comments or questions from the commission on the agenda? Seeing none, is there any public comment in Las Vegas on item two, approval of the agenda? Mr. Chair, Harry Ward for the record. Um, I will be substituting on 10K for Mr. David Newton. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ward. Any county advisory board or public comment in Reno? I'm sorry, say that again? Item two, approval of the agenda. Is there any public comment? Okay, how about Elko? No comment in Elko. All right, I'll bring it back to the board. Any further discussion on approval of the agenda? If not, I would entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Second. Okay, I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented by Commissioner McNinch, seconded by Commissioner Wallace. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries 9-0. We'll close agenda item number two, move to agenda item number three. Member items, announcements, and correspondence. This is informational. <coughs> Commissioners may present emergent items. No action may be taken by the commission. Any item requiring commission action may be scheduled on a future commission agenda. The commission will review and may discuss correspondence set and received by the commission since the last regular meeting and may provide copies for the exhibit file. Uh, correspondence sent or received by Secretary Wosley may also be discussed. Commission member items under item three. Okay, I've had a series of 
correspondence, but I believe all of it has been pertinent to something on the agenda. Um, so I will wait until we get to that agenda item to bring those items up. Um, Director Wasley, anything from you? No, Mr. Chair. Okay. One last call. Okay, seeing none, I'll close agenda item number three. We'll open agenda item number four, county advisory boards to manage wildlife member items. Again, informational. CAB members may present emergent items. No action may be taken by the commission. Any item requiring commission action will be scheduled on a future commission agenda. County advisory boards, if you have items, please come up to the mic. Mr. Bunch. Glenn Bunch, Mineral County. We would like to ask for whatever uh, avenue that it takes to make the ball start rolling. We'd like consideration for the possibility of introduction of elk in Mineral County. Thank you. Mr. Gil Yonick, Carson Advisory Board. Uh, I'd just like to bring the commission up to date on what's been happening in Carson City with regard to the urban deer issue that we've been dealing, <laughs> trying to deal with. And we, we have an updated uh, deer brochure that we've handed out close to 5,000 of these in Carson City. All the school kids have them. They've taken them home. We've got them in all the civic groups. We've got them in the main city hall, the Chamber of Commerce, the Visitors Bureau to give people as much information as, we've could, as we can regarding what to do, how to reduce the problem whenever possible uh, because we, we have seen, because it's still been relatively mild winter and up where I live in an area called Lakeview, we had a 180 pound doe killed with a car hit it and it was a shame she was a beautiful animal and it was too bad so it, I'll, I'll leave some of these for the commissioners if they want to take a look at it and we'll let you know how we're doing as the year progresses thank you thank you Gil additional county advisory board comments or items Seeing none, we'll close item number four, move to item number five, approval of the minutes for possible action. The commission may approve commission minutes from November 13 and 14, 2015 meeting. Has everyone had an opportunity to review the minutes? And if so, any comments or revisions? Okay, if there's no cat or uh, commission discussion, public comment or county advisory board comment in Las Vegas on item five, approval of minutes. Seeing none, are there any public comments in Reno on item number five, approval of minutes? Uh, none in Reno, uh, Mr. Chairman, but can you guys speak up? Because it's hard. We can't hear you guys. We will try. It feels Thank like you. I'm screaming in this room, but we'll Thank try you. and fix that. Uh, how about Elko? No comment in Elko. Okay. We'll bring it back to the commission. Any further discussion on approval of the minutes? If not, I would entertain a motion. Chairman Drew, I'll move to approve the November 13th and 14th minutes as presented today. Second. We've got a motion by Commissioner Bliss, a second by Commissioner Wallace to approve the minutes of the November 13th and 14th, 2015 me meeting as presented. Just a note for me, again, thanks to staff for putting those together. I know it was a, a long meeting and you guys did a great job. That, are there any questions or discussion on the motion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 9-0. We'll close item five and move to item number six, draft fiscal year 2017 predation management plan, wildlife specialist Pat Jackson for possible action. The draft FY 2017 predation management plan will be presented to the commission for initial review and input for submission to the state predatory animal and rodent committee. Um, Mr. Jackson, I think you're going to lead the presentation. Commissioner Bliss, I don't know if you had anything to add. Um, but before we kick it off, just uh, so folks remember, we're a couple months <coughs> since our last meeting, and some of this gets 
gets uh, rusty, but just keep in mind that this is the first uh, kind of a preliminary draft today um, for discussion, and there's going to be several iterations coming between this commission and also before um, our committee and now with the part <coughs> committee with AB 78 from last legislative session. So the process is going to be the same uh, with the addition of input from the park committee this year. So we're just getting started. Mr. Jackson. Thank you, uh, Pat Jackson, Predator Management Staff Specialist for the record. And I believe I'm waiting for the PowerPoint to be summoned. But, and while that is, I would like to reiterate that this is the initial draft of the Predator Management Plan, and I encourage any uh, commissioner, cab member, or uh, member of the public to contact me with any questions. I'm happy to uh, correspond on those. So this will be a pretty uh, short and sweet presentation. This just highlights the, uh, the use of the $3 predator fee, and uh, Endow is committed to using all available tools and the most up-to-date science, including strategic use of predator management to preserve our wildlife heritage for the long term. These are the uses uh, that, that we can uh, uh, spend the $3 predator fee on. It generates approximately $550,000 a year. Currently, $14,000 is allocated to wildlife services. It can be used for staff salary, the majority of it is used uh, to implement predator projects, and then if, if the reserve is, uh, if the reserve remains, it, 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 it's saved, it doesn't go to the general fund. Uh, there have been some changes in this past year, and so now the $3 predator fee may be spent on management of predatory wildlife, research on lethal controls for management of predatory wildlife, and then the prote protection of sensitive species. Uh, AB 78 also mandates that 80% of the most recent fiscal year for which we have complete accounting to be spent on lethal removal, and that now is also a driving force in, in planning uh, the, the predator management plan. What, uh, last year was the first year that we did this. Uh, we've we've uh, identified three different categories of projects. The first one would be implementation. You might note that this is where the rubber hits the road. Our primary objective is some sort of implementation on the ground, and uh, uh, we would hope to be able to uh, make inference on that success, um, but that's not necessarily the, uh, uh, the, mo the, the highest level priority. Experimental management is where we have a management goal, but we're also testing a technique, and so uh, inference and the uh, uh, management goal might be uh, equal in those situations. And then experimentation is where we're just increasing our uh, knowledge of predators. These always have, an under at a minimum, an underlying tone of, a, of management interest, but at times we're just interested in, in predator biology. And so uh, projects that we are recommending for continuation, uh, Project 21, uh, Greater Sage Grouse Protection. Uh, this has been a project for a number of years. And so to protect Greater Sage Grouse, we are lethally removing uh, uh, common ravens. And we receive a depredation permit from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service we have for a number of years, and that's capped at 2,500. And Wildlife Services conducts that lethal removal for us. They use the uh, avicide known as DRC 1339, and uh, a general rule of thumb for every 11 eggs that they put out, or I'm sorry, every, every 11 eggs consumed, that equals uh, one lethal raven, and that's one way that they calculate the number of ravens removed. And then there's also a survey component, uh, pre and post uh, removal, as well as or it's pre and post removal to determine the success of the removal and then also pre-surveys to determine where raven surveys need to be conducted. Subproject so 2102, Common Raven Removal and Greater Sage Grouse Nest Success. This is a collaboration with Endow Wildlife Services and the USGS. And uh, this is being conducted in the Virginia Mountains where Wildlife, Service, it, wildlife Services is lethally removing ravens in the USGS is uh, monitoring both sage grouse nest success and, uh, and raven abundance. Uh, this project was, this was the last fiscal year that this project was initially expected to be done. Uh, talking to the USGSPI, Dr. Pete Coates, he would like an additional year of funding um, uh, because of statistical noise and variances in precipitation and, and weather, and uh, he is uh, planning on coming to the uh, uh, upcoming commission meeting to speak to that. Uh, project 22 was created as kind of an umbrella project uh, for mule deer and game enhancement. Um, since I've started, we've discovered that it's somewhat difficult to report on all the different sub-projects, 
and uh, it's also hard to distinguish the difference between a subproject and project. And so, uh, the subprojects we're going to let run their course, but from here on out, when we propose new projects, they receive their own unique number and, and are not a subproject under Project 22. Uh, 2201 is removal of mountain lions to protect uh, California bighorn sheep, and uh, our main goal here is to establish a uh, self-sustaining population of bighorns so that uh, constant removal is not needed, but currently Wildlife Services uh, works in these management units uh, through, uh, through trapping and snaring mountain lions. Uh, Subproject 2216, coyote den density and population effects on mule deer fawns and other wildlife species. Uh, this is an interest in identifying uh, the density of dens in the Monitor Mountain Range understanding the, uh, the populations of coyotes as well as uh, uh, other prey species in, uh, in that mountain range with the uh, intentions of lethally removing coyotes in future years to uh, understand the impacts on those, uh, on those species. Uh, Subproject 22074, mountain lion removal for the protection of Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep. Uh, this again, uh, we're attempting to establish a self-sustaining population of bighorn and we're working with wildlife services. Instead of traps and snares, we're instead using hounds through, through wildlife services. Uh, we may also, in the future, use a private contractor uh, to uh, reduce big, or I'm sorry, mountain lion populations to, for the benefit of bighorn sheep. Uh, Project 32 is a collaboration between Nevada Department of Wildlife and uh, the Wildlife Conservation Society, and this is mountain lion, black bear, and mule deer interactions. Uh, both Endow and uh, Wildlife Conservation Society are interested in black bears recolonization of the state of Nevada and how uh, the presence of mountain lions and uh, their killing of primarily mule deer may or may not exacerbate that recolonization of black bears. This is a historical uh, uh, habitat of black bears uh, that once existed in Nevada and a potential uh, habitat to be recolonized. And so to identify these, we're hoping to uh, mark a number of uh, black bears, uh, mountain lions, and then also mule deer. I'd like to make note that mule deer will actually be funded from a different source. And then uh, technicians visit mountain lion kill sites to determine uh, those uh, prey items, and then trail cameras are also placed on items. And then uh, these GPS collars actually have uh, a new technology uh, that uh, collect data on a much more fine scale once the, uh, a mountain lion wearing a collar and a uh, black bear wearing a collar or within a certain proximity to one another so we can understand that uh, interaction on a much finer scale. And uh, uh, Dr. John uh, Beckman uh, will be speaking in the future uh, to this project. Uh, project 37, uh, Big Game Protection Mountain Lions. This is attempting to solve the same issues that Project 22 was originally designed to solve, but uh, we find it's a little easier for reporting. And so we want to address uh, mountain lion predation that has a negative impact on game populations by removing specific animals that are identified as uh, problematic, and that could be through a combination of uh, GPS uh, locations, uh, primarily mortality signals from bighorn, I'm sorry, from uh, 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 big game like deer or uh, bighorns trail cams, and then also biologists that are in the field. Uh, big game protection coyotes, a uh, very similar project to uh, project 37 just with coyotes instead of mountain lions and so w we propose this to continue this project to address coyote predation when it's identified as a negative impact and um, that's primarily would be conducted in winter range and fawning habitat of uh, mule deer and or mountain or I'm sorry uh, mule deer and or antelope. Uh, project 40 is a, uh, a multifaceted management project designed to uh, complement uh, feral horse removal that was conducted in the Diamond Mountain Range, as well as habitat improvement and some previous predator removal uh, uh, efforts. And this is a, the, the, the uh, contractors will primarily be wildlife services and uh, with the potential for a private contractor. Uh, a newly proposed project, we just have one, uh, Project 41, Common Raven Management and Experimentation. Uh, there's uh, I believe most people agree that the common raven population of Nevada has been on the increase since it's been monitored, and with the uh, sorry, with the cap of 2,500, we are uh, we have to figure out how to maximize our impact on that lethal 
uh, management side, but then also manage Ravens in a non-lethal fashion. And so uh, to do that, we'd like to be able to develop a protocol to estimate Ravens, potentially statewide, but at least in areas of, uh, of concern around sage grouse slicks and nesting habitat, um, understand their uh, density and distribution, um, and then also how human subsidies may or may not impact those densities, and then finally have some sort of recommendations on how to uh, non-lethally mitigate that through uh, some examples might be uh, utility lines and, uh, and reducing uh, some sort of human subsidy on the uh, landscape. Uh, the two projects that we're recommending for discontinuation, uh, Project 35 using genetic testing to identify origin of red fox. This was a collaboration between Endow and the University of California, Davis, and it was a very successful project that we, we will be reporting on in the uh, Predator Report. It was looking at the uh, genetics between a Sierra Nevada red fox and the uh, exotic uh, European red fox, and uh, uh, the main gist is that uh, Sierra Nevada red fox were not detected uh, in the state of Nevada. Project 39 was predator education. We never implemented anything with this. Uh, as soon, or very soon after we received approval for this project, uh, EB78 passed, which uh, uh, struck uh, spending $3 predator fee on predator education, and so we recommend it for discontinuation. And with that, I'll entertain any questions. Questions from the commission? Commissioner Bliss? Yeah, thank, <coughs> thank you, Chairman Drew. Um, Mr. Jackson, I, I wanted to speak uh, primarily here on uh, Project 40 in the Diamond. 40. Yeah, uh, the Diamond Mountains project. <clears throat> Just a little bit of background, uh, Eureka County Wildlife Advisory Board and the county itself, um, they, they put some funds together and they did a lot of habitat work um, in the Diamonds and Roberts Creek Mountain area. Um, their main focus was a lot of it, it was all done on private lands, um, but they, they targeted areas that were like transition uh, phases from sage grouse lecking areas to nesting areas to where they spent a lot of time in the summer. An interesting little piece of information is um, I went to one of those sites where those trees were removed and there was some uh, uh, brush manipulation done there as well. And in the past, there was never any birds in that area at that time. Um, after that work was done, I counted 85 birds on a lek where that was done. It was, it was something to see. It was, uh, um, see all the hard work pay off when, when you can see something like that. Um, they also uh, removed um, feral horses, which benefited the, uh, the grasses and the, the feed on the mountain turned around 100% in, in just one year. Um, you could see a huge <coughs> difference. So as, as the Eureka County Advisory Board um, put some of this project together for Project 40, they wanted to tie some of the predator work into the work that they've already done. According, along with Policy 23, it, it, it states that within the policy itself. The one concern that they have is the um, Raven work is really not, there's not a specific project that's tied to the Diamonds and Roberts Creek for, for Raven removal during the lack and nesting period. They understand that it's uh, could be done through the statewide deal and Yerke County is in there, but they would almost like to see a targeted removal, uh, Raven removal project um, to go along with all the other additional work that they've done. Um, interesting enough that one of the uh, sites is near a dump. And as I was watching those birds, the, the, the sage grouse, the ravens flying from the dump over the top of these birds, they just shut down. When anything flew over the top of them, they just quit. And so there are a lot of ravens in, in that area. And it's right in the close proximity where the, where the nesting area is too. So I think <clears throat> there's some, I think it'd be money well spent and to look at a specific 
project for Ravens um, in the Diamonds, uh, or in, the, in that general area. Um, there's also a few <clears throat> little, you know, some are uh, typos within the, in the plan. Um, at, at one point, uh, it references the Diamond Range is in Washoe County. We just need to fix that to Pretty Rick County. Um, and then the dates where the, the, the PJ, the Pinion and Juniper work has been done is like 13, 2013, 14, 15, and it's still ongoing. They still got more projects planned and going forward with it, but um, it's a real, it's a, it's a good project and, and seeing results. And so maybe we can work towards that direction for this next set of, uh, when, when you bring it back. Okay. Commissioner Drew, I've, uh, I've got just a couple of them, and these came from the Clark County Advisory Board. Um, w one of the main questions that they had concerning the Ravens um, was the actual number of take permits that, that Endow has in combination with wildlife services, et cetera. And I was wondering if you can kind of clarify where we are with that and, and just for the so currently, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services issues Endow uh, a permit for 2,500, and then it's my understanding that uh, the Wildlife Services gets their own permit for another 2,500. So uh, legally, a, uh, uh, 5,000 ravens can be removed uh, throughout the state, and uh, there there have been discussions about requesting an increase in that cap for, for Nevada Department of Wildlife. And uh, we would like to see that. And uh, that's kind of uh, above my pay grade, so to speak, on uh, those discussions. Um, that's really a, a political and biological decision. And, uh, and so w w we would like to see that. I know that I've spoken with uh, Dr. Pete Coates, and uh, he, he's been in those discussions as well. But I, I guess I don't, I don't have any more information that I can provide on that at this time. So I guess the maximum number of ravens to take in the state would be 5,000? That's correct. At this time? Yes. Okay. Well, actually, let me add to that. There are uh, some, uh, some mines that also hold permits, and I do not know the, uh, the, the, how many ravens they're allowed to take. I know that that's really just for their property and to remove nests from uh, utility lines and things like that, but I, I, don't, I do not know what that uh, uh, total amount would be. Additional questions? Commissioner Bliss? Yeah, I'd just like to make one more general comment on sure. the projects all in a whole, and not just these projects, but any projects going forward. Um, when, we, I, when there's a project area identified, um, I, I, I believe that we need to go at that project 100%. We need to make sure that it's fully funded to the maximum to make sure that it, we accomplish what we set out to do. I think if you put a little bit of money here and a little bit of money over here and a little bit of money over here, you don't, you don't end up with the result that you want. I think it needs to be targeted, make sure you have enough resource to make sure you accomplish what you want to do with the numbers to reduce. And uh, so as you look at these projects, you know, I'll just look at this one for 60,000 because it's on the screen, is a, you know, a week's worth of flying to spend that money really going to accomplish what you set out to do. So just to make sure that we have enough funding to make sure that the results that we're reaching for have a chance. Additional commission discussion or questions? I just had one point, and this is maybe a note for staff, Suzanne. I know we got, um, I got some correspondence, one from Don Moldy, Jake Tibbetts, I think Commissioner Bliss touched on, and then Laura DeMore. And I just wanted to make sure now that we're kind of into a new process that our committee members are getting those correspondence as well as Mr. Jackson and the members of the park. If we could just loop everyone in on, on those items, I'd appreciate it. So we're all getting that correspondence. 
Okay, other questions or comments? Commissioner Hubs? Yes, I have a, a couple questions. Um, so when we get the predator management plan, um, it's nice it comes with an introduction and a, a summary as to why the area was selected, the, um, what the objective is, and then what's going to be done. Um, is there a way once um, I mean, when do we see the data from the removal and how that's impacting the long-term goal? I'm trying to understand that a bit better and, and when that's um, provided to the commission, to the public, so we can see that um, perhaps whether or not measure that that, that um, type of strategy has worked. Uh, we mm -hmm. provide the predator report at the final commission meeting each year and that's mm -hmm. where uh, uh, quote in quote raw data so the total number of animals removed and then uh, inference on the success and uh, impacts of each project are completed and and when we're um, seeing the report we I had a, we had a question come up um, last night about the data in, a, in and of itself so do we append raw data to those reports so the public can see the impact of the the strategies that were used and what was taken from areas or that was something that came up and we didn't really know um, how much data is provided to the public in general. To my recollection, we've never appended raw reports. We have, however, summarized the, for, you know, I believe it was uh, Raven Take by county. It may be by game management unit. I don't recall off the top of my head. So we, we do provide that, but we wouldn't provide, say, the exact location where say a raven was removed and, and that is in part uh, or really uh, majorly because of our relationship with wildlife services and their relationships with landowners and the, and the protection of those identity you know if, if they're conducting removal for us uh, near a private residence uh, that private residence may not uh, you know want that information out there thank you additional discussions or questions Seeing none, uh, this is for possible action, so I will open it up. County Advisory Board inputs on item number six, draft fiscal year uh, 2017 predation management plan. For the record, Bill Stanley representing the Clark County Cab. Uh, in a split 4-3 decision, uh, the Clark Cab recommended accepting the plan as written with the exception of the three following items. Uh, recommended not funding Project 2216. As a result today, uh, garnering no useful data from the money being invested. Uh, they also, uh, for Project 21 and 2102, the Cab wants to know if the studies would lead to increased authority from the feds to remove more ravens. I think that was the discussion earlier. Uh, there was some discussion about whether it was 25,000 or 2,500 or 5,000 and, and that question has been answered and I'll take that back. Uh, and, and third, uh, finally, the overall plan as written lacks clarity as to measurables and detailed expected results. In addition, better background material is needed on each project to, clarify, to clearly define what we are investing predator funds on this project. The dissenting opinion did not agree with unfunding Project 2216. Thank you. Additional County Advisory Board input. Come on up, Mr. Rittenhouse. For the record, Bob Rittenhouse, Douglas County. In our CAB meeting this uh, past uh, week, uh, we the discussion of Project 32 came up, and we would like to be included in the project area uh, around the Tahoe Basin. Okay. Additional County Advisory Board input. Seeing none public comment in Las Vegas. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Commission. Uh, for the record, Jana Wright, resident of Clark County. I understand this is the first draft for the 27 predation plan, but I'd like to draw your attention to page three. It says that the predator management is a tool to be applied deliberately and strategically. The predator management may use lethal or non-lethal methods. 
The plan should be applied on a case-by-case -case basis with clear goals, and I emphasize clear goals, based on objective scientific analysis of available data. It should be applied with proper intensity and at a focus scale. It also states that projects should be monitored to determine whether desired results are achieved. I feel the plan is lacking clear goals or desired results of each project. <coughs> Excuse me. For instance, Project 21, it doesn't say when the poison eggs will be placed. Is this 24-7 year-round or a time-specific? How many ravens were killed last fiscal year on this project? 2102 project. It has a little bit more detail referencing uh, the end-of-year report. But what has the department learned about ravens and their population patterns? On project 2201, um, I started to say we have plenty of sheep, but at the CAB meeting we learned that the pathogen, the strain is impacting our population of sheep and probably is going to impact the quota discussion later on this year. So once again, the fiscal year 2015 end of year report said six lions were killed. What are we really learning? Project 22074, again, there's no mention of problem lions. It just seems like we're killing lions. Why? Project 38, I personally find aerial gunning to be a sick practice. And on page 29, what are the sensitive areas during certain times of the year? What are they referencing? And Project 40, uh, increase mule deer and sage grouse populations by removing coyotes. How many coyotes did Wildlife Services remove in the area in 2011, 2012? And the private contractor in 2014 that's mentioned on page 32, was this a trapper? I just think that the plan is vague. There needs to be more details. And uh, I hope moving forward we'll have that information. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Additional public comment, Las Vegas? If there's additional comment, come on up and we'll use both mics just so we're going seamlessly. So if anyone else has comment after this young lady, we'll take it. Go ahead. Just for the record, Dana Leong, I'm a private citizen here in uh, Las Vegas. Um, just had two questions. How many uh, common ravens do you estimate are in Nevada and what are the methods? I guess they are talking about uh, poison eggs, but what, what are all the methods that they're going to do to remove the common ravens? Anyone else in Vegas? One more? Lynn Collins, Associate Director, Mountain Lion Foundation. I'm representing our entire Nevada membership, um, so I'm hoping this is the right moment to stand. Um, <clears throat> we are concerned about conservation of mountain lions in Nevada in general um, and are going to be getting a five-year um, uh, focus on this state. We're a nationwide organization dedicated to conservation of mountain lions, and um, Nevada has become one of our most serious concerns. Um, we're concerned about the length of season, the quota, the, ma the predator management plans, depredation, poison, habitat loss. As more people, pets, and livestock come into the state, we're, you're probably seeing more conflict. But particularly, I wanted to talk today about the predator management plans. Um, these are additive to these other causes of mortality for mountain lions. And we would like to see a, a more effective reporting on the plans, more comprehensive plans, and to that effect, I'll just echo uh, Don Moldy's letter and Jana Wright's comments on the lack of uh, comprehensive information that's contained in both the, the plans and the reports. I was the one last night who asked for more transparency in this process. Um, I went this morning and looked for the actual reports um, that have been published, and I was only able to find 2014's report and 2015's report only in draft on the website. So 
although they may be hidden, um, we're not seeing um, <clears throat> easy <clears throat> availability to the public of the reporting information. Um, and that makes it difficult to evaluate upcoming plans. <clears throat> Previously, information had present, been presented over many years um, in a cumulative fashion that was more comprehensible to the public, and that practice was stopped two years ago. Uh, we don't understand the reason for that. Um, so all of this information is difficult for the public to find and to follow. Um, we would like to see um, better reporting, um, but also more transparent reporting and more ease given to the public to be able to comment on this. We would prefer not to engage in public records requests or FOIA. It's a, a waste of everyone's time. So if an effort could be made on the part of the commission. Excuse me, this department. is Fred Volts in Reno. Uh, point of order here, we cannot hear anything that's being said. And this is an open meeting law violation. Uh, if you folks want to continue the meeting, we're going to be filing a complaint with the Attorney General about this. Thank you, Mr. Volz. We'll take a break here in just a minute before we go to audio for Reno and see if we can't get it straightened out. Please continue, Miss. Um, the Mountain Lion Foundation is going to call for a moratorium, whether that's by petition to this um, entity or, or another, on mountain lion hunting at the very least reduction of the quota and a truncation of the, of the, the year-long season. And the reason for this is the lack of science that's been presented in the reports and in the plans. Um, well, um, we understand that your hands are tied with the 80% rule. That doesn't mean that you can't choose to reduce hunting of mountain lions to offset the new losses. And frankly, um, until there's better science, we can't see a, a way to move forward with continuing to kill additional mountain lions when there's no evidence that mountain lion numbers are increasing in the state. Um, you've committed to using the most up-to-date science. There's no mention of Andreasen's report in northern Nevada, no mention of Choate's reports from southern Nevada mountain lion research, no mention of Wilgus in the current plan, and his, um, his information from eastern Washington on hunting mountain lions has revolutionized our thinking on removal and its impact on both prey and um, depredation. Um, you have the opportunity to conduct research that would actually look at um, the efficacy of lethal versus non-lethal measures, but instead have, have simply chosen to remove problem lions. That's not science. Um, you have the opportunity to demonstrate leadership among states that hunt mountain lions. You can make really good choices. But you can't do that without a comprehensive plan. And there has not been a, a comprehensive mountain lion plan in this state since 1995. Of all the states that hunt mountain lions, that is the farthest back that, that any state goes without looking at this, prey species, or this predator species, which is an apex predator and the most important in the state, in a comprehensive manner. Science in the last 20 years has turned our understanding of lions upside down. And this commission deserves to be informed um, and to be able to make decisions with the best available science. So I would urge you to, over the next couple of months, take a really hard look at what you're doing and see if you can't create a situation where this 80% rule becomes an opportunity rather than something which is going to bring um, greater and greater scrutiny of mountain lion treatment um, in the great state of Nevada. Thank you for your time. Karen Lane, um, Mr. Chairman, uh, commissioners, good morning. Uh, I just want to reiterate uh, or echo what has been said by the last two speakers. Um, I've been coming to these meetings since 2010. We've been talking about the predation plan and the need for measurable goals and objectives. As a matter of fact, I had to laugh at the park meeting um, I actually had to agree with Jerry Lent uh, when he talked about we need to be more measurable in, in terms of what it is that we're trying to get at by having this predation plan. And it's not, you, I think we all agree, it's not the number of animals that we kill. It's what happens when you kill those animals. Does your lamb recruitment go up? Can you actually show that? 
I think the complaint of the sportsmen in the past has been, wow, hey, look at the number of coyotes we killed. Look at the number of mountain lions we killed. It cost us a lot of money, but uh, the mule deer herds haven't increased. Or we don't see any, uh, you know, we still don't see any change in the game animals. So I think those are the issues that I would like to see addressed. We really need to deal with what is it that we get for this money and these animals that we're killing. Thank you. Is there additional public comment in Las Vegas? Okay, if not, we're gonna take a break uh, in the middle of item number six to see if we can get our audio to Reno fixed. It's 1046 by my clock. We will readjourn at 11 o'clock. Commissioner Elko isn't hearing very well either. All right, we'll be in touch. Thank you.